Welcome on board the Rich Planet Starship, broadcasting from somewhere high above the Earth. I'm Richard D. Hall. This week's guest is an ex-principal intelligence analyst from South Yorkshire Police. In 2010, having learned about the possible involvement by authorities in both 9-11 and 7-7 terrorist attacks, whilst compiling the annual strategic threat assessment for South Yorkshire Police, he alerted senior management to a major problem on the strategic threat from terrorism that being the threat of an internal tyranny, which far exceeded the threat from any other source, such as Islamic terrorism or the Irish dissident republic. These views eventually led to his dismissal. He is Tony Farrell, and he joins me today to talk about his emerging story. Welcome, Tony. Thank you, Richard. And thank you for coming on board. Now, um, Tony, um, to get the ball rolling, if you can just give me some brief information on your qualifications first. What did you study? Because you, you're a graduate, yeah? Yes, that's right. Um, going back in 1984, I graduated at Sheffield, uh, Hallam University, Sheffield Polytechnic in those days with a, uh, a BSc in Applied Statistics. Mm -hmm. That was in 1984. Um, I then worked within Sheffield City Council quickly into a managerial position. And then in 1993, um, joined the police. Mm -hmm. While I was at the police, I did two um, extra qu postgraduate qualifications. Firstly, a postgraduate diploma in management studies mm -hmm. uh, that was sponsored by the police. And secondly, uh, a postgraduate diploma in uh, criminal intelligence and analysis at Manchester University. Right. So you're not a police officer, no, but you I'm work for the police. Staff, yes. Right. Support staff. That's correct. And you've been an intelligence analyst for how long? I, I have been a principal intelligence analyst since 1988. 1998, now, sorry. Okay. Now, just as a broad overview, I think there are 43 forces in the UK. That's correct. In England Each one of them employs intelligence analysts for yes. a range of purposes, I guess. But each one has one single principal intelligence analyst. That's normally the case, yes. So you were the principal intelligence analyst at South Yorkshire Police. So yeah, uh, the head of profession of intelligence analysts is right. another way of describing that. Okay. Now then, um, you were, were asked to um, produce an annual threat assessment. That's correct. This was um, due to be handed in, I believe, last year in July. That's correct. And but you started to learn about various, uh, well, we'll call them theories, uh, um, which you thought should be worded into your threat assessment. You assessed, you, you learned about certain things to do with 9-11 and 7-7, and you believed that they represented some kind of threat. So can you explain um, that for us? W what led you to information about these terrorist attacks? Right. Um, well, the two components, there was my, my work for the police um, and my homework mm -hmm. were, were, were different and, and both came into horrible conflict. So um, I was asked to do a strategic threat assessment matrix, a, a simplified model of a strategic threat assessment. And um, I'd always assumed that the terrorist threat was as government narrative would have us believe. Mm -hmm. um, so I um, believe the story of 9-11. Uh, um, as I think most people did on the day that's it happened. Right, yeah. And I'd never had any reason to doubt that. And likewise with 7-7. And, and that was very much the case in the lead up to when the assignment was due, which was on the 8th of July. 2010. That's correct, mm -hmm. yes. So I, I was uh, preparing all my, um, one of my major assignments, um, happily not anticipating any problem. However, I have uh, interest in my home study in, in geo geopolitical events mm -hmm. uh, and the history of the church. Mm -hmm. And in looking at that, mm -hmm. I came across um, uh, information on the New World Order. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't like the looks of. Um, and research more into that, just as a, an, a, an interest, outside interest. But it was at that point, shortly before the assignment was due, mm -hmm. that uh, I came across, without looking really for it, mm -hmm. um, uh, information on 9-11, which was so utterly compelling yes. in turn, or damning about the actual official narrative. Mm -hmm. um, and using my analytical skills, it wasn't difficult to balance one against the other. And uh, I came to the belief and conclusion that 9-11 was a massive inside job false flag attack. Mm -hmm. um, and that clearly posed me a problem mm -hmm. with, with um, uh, completing one component part of the strategic threat assessment, which was the terrorism aspect. 
Um, but a, a minister uh, I spoke to uh, just prior to uh, uh, the deadline suggested I look into 7-7. Seven -seven. Uh, it, was, it was speculative. Um, I didn't in my wildest dreams believe uh, that could be the case. Mm -hmm. So this Sadly, is the 7-7 seven -seven London bombings of 2005. 2005. Uh, 56 people died. Yes. So you, so you looked to see whether there was so information. I, I, I put the, hypoth the alternative hypothesis to the test mm -hmm. and researched in my own time, in my home study, mm -hmm. uh, any, everything and anything I could find. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't long before I came to the conclusion that, sadly, 7-7, seven -seven, in my opinion, uh, was a monstrous lie mm -hmm. um, perpetrated by our own intelligence services with clear government complicity at the time. Mm -hmm. Okay, now, so you then wanted, you then saw that as the major threat and wanted to include this in your threat assessment? Well, clearly, if I'm, uh, I was, um, I, I expect, all the expectation was that I would um, follow the norm and actually articulate a threat that was from Islamic terrorists mm -hmm. and Al Qaeda. Uh, not drawing from any particular um, internal source other than government document. Mm -hmm. uh, narrative on that issue. Mm -hmm. um, this was a strategic threat, so it would be something that would support the government policy at the time, the contest, the prevent strategy mm -hmm. um, that police forces were enforcing. Um, but that went, ran hor that was horribly contradictory mm -hmm. to my now bel my belief, my genuinely held beliefs that that wasn't necessarily the case. In fact, the case was the exact opposite mm -hmm. of the worst possible kind. Uh, internal tyranny. So, so you were due to present your report on the 8th of July last year? That's correct, yes. But because of these reservations, you thought that you'd flag them up with a detective chief inspector? Is that detective right? superintendent. Sorry, detective superintendent. A director of intelligence, yes. Right. So, so who, who did you report to directly, Tony, uh, first? I, I reported, my, my relationship was cl most closely with the director of intelligence, and I had a, one, a, a line management responsibility to do the check to detective Chief Inspector for day-to-day -day reporting, right. but for the strategic work, it was always for the Director of Intelligence. And where would the Director of Intelligence be based at? He, he would be based in uh, headquarters of South Yorkshire Police right. in the Specialist Crime Services. Right. So you thought, I want, I want to put, I want to mention the threat of internal tyranny in my report because you believed that this was the bigger threat. Well, the first thing I needed to do, mm -hmm. I felt obliged to do, is given my beliefs. Uh, formulated by my own home study that ran horribly contradictory to the government narrative. The first thing I, w I, f I felt compelled to do mm -hmm. was to alert management to that predicament that I was in. That I know, as, as the analyst tasked to do the threat assessment, yes. my assessment of threat was not in accordance with their conceptual model of threat. Yes. If their conceptual model of threat was for Islamic terrorists being a major threat to the yep. UK citizens. Mm -hmm. so, so you presented the detective superintendent with, um, well, these two um, sheets that you drew up about 9/11 and 7/7 being inside jobs. They, they were they were very much. Um, uh, this was all happening thick and fast, mm -hmm. and I was uh, this this was an alert saying a briefing note saying Houston, we have a problem here. Yeah. Um, you know, there's there's so much information if you know how to look for it uh -huh. that's out there that offers compelling evidence in my opinion uh -huh. that the government have told massive lies on 9-11 and 7-7 the respective governments and that in itself is a threat uh -huh. so i was flagging this up saying look you need we need to look at what's out there so this is two days before you were due to submit this that's report. Right, now yeah. just read um from the sheets that you prepared you presented these to your a superior officer for rapidly growing body of Americans who no longer believe the Pentagon version of 9-11. Uh, the, in, the internet will ensure that the alternative version of events and the one I believe, the inside job, gets promoted far and wide. There is huge potential for a total breakdown in trust between government and the masses. And then you cite um, a Charlie Sheen video, uh, Jesse Ventura episode, 9-11 was the key witness murdered. Um, you've also mentioned 9-11 NYPD, the first responder speaks out. Um, and also you mentioned loose change, that's the 9-11. So you were kind of coming at from a, the point of view of, hey, look, the people are seeing the truth 
and there are going to be a backlash against the government because of this, and you saw that as a potential threat to the, the police might have to look, look at. Clearly that was relevant. Okay. I, I anticipated that um, there was a shift. Of, uh, it seemed clear that there was a growth of, of doubters in America, mm -hmm. and that, that would actually at some stage come a tipping point. Right. And that if that, you know, the, with the internet, the power of the internet, such, such, such things can grow exponentially. Yes. And therefore that in itself would be a threat to community cohesion. Yes. Um, so I was simply at this stage alerting, mm -hmm. without necessarily taking a side, but yeah. alerting my management to a potential problem right. that I didn't think they would alert to. Right, okay. Now, in the, on 7.7, you said that there exists some very well-documented research available on the internet to suggest that the 7-7 bombings were also an inside job, deliberately engineered to justify Prime Minister Tony Blair's decision to stand shoulder to shoulder with George Bush in the case for going to war in Iraq. There is a highly professional and determined movement from USA led by Alex Jones. Alex that, Jones, yeah. Uh, that seems determined to get the truth out at all costs. The alternative version of events presented appear extremely plausible, especially if it is assumed that 9-11 was an inside job. Jones's message is likely to rapidly gain in strength through the use of YouTube and internet, especially if the US government's version of 9-11 becomes widely discredited, as I think it will be in uh, the fullness of time. There will be a total outrage with the masses and a breakdown of trust between government and the population of the UK. So you saw the threat as, bec as becoming a conflict between people who were trying to find the truth about these events that they've yeah. been lied to, uh, that they're false flag attacks. Okay, so what happened when you presented these, these t t to your officer? Well, it, it certainly didn't go down very well. I, uh, I, I um, took a couple of peer uh, officers in the room and for the first time alerted management to this. Um, and that the doors were quickly shut. So you wanted a couple of witnesses yes. in there because you felt that you, you said was, that you were quite worried at that point. When I first put my head above the parapet, which was on the 6th of July, I was, it was with some understandable trepidation that I did this. Mm -hmm. um, and, and at this stage, I uh, wanted somebody to see, uh, other than the manager, to see this. So, but they were quickly moved out of the office and I had a one-to-one -one with uh, the director of intelligence. Mm -hmm. And... Um, um, we discussed um, this in an amicable way, but there was pressure on me to uh, immediately go to occupational health because of, uh, you know, of a perception that uh, I was feeling unwell. Right, um, so this one officer tried to, to make out that there was something wrong with your mental state. So go, is that what he was I trying think to say? Possible, I, I don't know exactly why uh, they, they were, I can only speculate as to mm. why they wanted me to go to occupational health. They would clearly say it was for my welfare. Mm -hmm. they, were, they, they would clearly say they were worried about me. Mm -hmm. In actual fact, I, I'd never felt better or stronger. And uh, uh, there was simply, I was fine at work. There was no sickness issues or anything like that. Clearly, I was doing something that was um, w required me to, in a way, stick my head above the parapet. Mm -hmm. uh, and doing it for the first time, there was some understandable trepidation, which they would have seen. Mm -hmm. um, but this was such a big issue. So, so you then so refused on. to go to the occupational... Or did you I go declined. To, did I, you I, I, I made it clear that I didn't think there was anything wrong with me. I didn't, think, I didn't feel unwell. Mm -hmm. I felt perfectly fine. And I had just brought them to attention something exceptionally serious that uh, I needed to alert them on. Now, they then told you to take a couple of days off. No, not that. exactly. What right. happened was that the assignment was mm -hmm. due right. on the 8th of July. Yes. And they wanted to make sure that I could deliver on the assignment to a board meeting that was taking place on the 8th of July. So their first primary concern seemed to be to make sure everything stayed on track for that. Yes. So the assignment that I was tasked to do, the strategic threat assessment matrix, um, they still wanted out, but they wanted it out in such a way that the alert that I'd given them had to be ignored. Mm -hmm. It right. couldn't be considered. Right. Okay. Um, and that the terrorist threat still had to be consistent with the government narrative, mm -hmm. i.e. the terrorist threat had to remain Al Islamic terrorism. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Now, um, at that point, is that when they then said, look, go away for a few days and write, uh, write a report? No. They, this, this, ironically, uh, five years to the day, 7th of July, 
uh, my uh, other manager, uh, a detective chief inspector, spent the day with me just to uh, make sure that everything was on track for delivery of the product, the assignment. So we worked together, right. uh, still of a view, of a mind, that I was going to hand over a strategic threat assessment matrix that would actually be complicit in, the, in what I now believe to be a lie. Right. I felt sick as I was, I was going through my work because all of a sudden I had, I'd, I'd, I'd had that paradigm shift mm -hmm. whereby I could not, in my conscience, yeah. go along with this. Yeah. But my managers didn't seem at all concerned. Uh, they just wanted that product delivered for the Intelligence Strategy Board and business could carry on as normal. Yeah. They didn't want me to alert them to this issue. Or that's how it appeared. Um, and for the for the one day and one day only, that was the 7th of July. Last year, uh, last 2010. Year, I went along with that and I was all prepared to deliver on the 8th of July the full strategic assessment in accordance with what they want. Right. Right. But in my mind, it would have to go along with, uh, go, go with the lie. When I went home on the evening of the 7th of 7, mm -hmm. I, a defining moment, a val my valley of decision came to me that evening. Right. And I knew, conscience-wise, with the faith I have, uh, I could not, in all honesty, go in and hand over my assignment. Because, to my mind, that would have made me complicit in the monstrous tyranny that had occurred in 9-11 and 7-7 mm -hmm. because I would have been mm -hmm. supporting the lie knowingly given yeah. what I was now convinced was a monstrous lie and, and conscience would not allow me to do that. Okay then Tony, well we're going to go for a short break, it's very powerful stuff and we'll find out um, after this break what happened to you next. <laughs>